What's going on everybody? Hope you're all doing well. My name is Andrew and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be looking at a new piece of gear that I personally have and we are also going to be looking at how to set it up. Without further ado, let's get into it. How to set up your audio interface. So this particular piece of gear is nothing new to the market, but it is new to me. I had two interfaces before, the Claret 2 Pre USB, as well as an Octopre, an eight channel preamp that was used to mic up my drum kit. I figured I have way too much gear around my desk area, so I'm gonna downsize and I'm gonna get one single unit that can help me do all my things. Thus, I end up getting the Focusrite Scarlett 18i20. The 18i20 is a very similar model to the Sapphire Pro 40 from the same company Focusrite. It's an eight channel interface, eight mic pre's and 10 line outs, also expandable through ADAT. Now this can apply to any interface that you get, whether you have a Scarlett 2i2, if you've got a baby face, if you've got an Apollo, the process of hooking this up to your personal computer is gonna be just the same. So let's head over to my very messy desk area and we'll figure it out. And here we are at my very messy desk area. I should have cleaned up before we started recording this. So we have the 18i20 and a lot of people ask what to do at this point. How do I hook this thing up? One of the things that a lot of people get confused on is where we start hooking things up. Where do I plug it into my computer? Where does my audio go? And in other cases, some people are also confused as to where the microphones and instruments go. So let's go over all of that. At the back of the unit, we're gonna find the port where we plug it into our computer. In this particular case, it's USB-C. Others can be USB-A. It's also on the back where we're gonna find our main outputs, in which case we will plug in our monitor cables. On the front of the interface, you're gonna find all the controls for your gain for your microphones, as well as your headphone dial and your main monitor dial. For those wondering where the microphones go, for those wondering where the rest of the mic... For those wondering where the rest of the microphones go, aside from the two ports in the front, there are also six more in the back. So let's start off by plugging this guy right into our computer. So in this particular case, I actually have a perfect spot right here for all my... My cables just fell. My desk was initially designed to have a MIDI keyboard put right here, so when I wanted to use it and write some music, I could. In any case, the space is empty and it's perfect for me to just plop the interface right here. Gonna go get the cables now. So right now, all I'm doing is feeding my USB-C port to the actual port at the back here. Once the USB cable is plugged in, we need obviously a power source. Now, some interfaces are small enough to be powered by the computer themselves. In the 18i20's case, it is too big to be powered just by the computer alone. So we do need an external power source. So we're gonna connect that next. That's connected. And the last thing we need to connect are going to be the speaker cables. Now let's head over to the back of the desk where you're gonna see my rat's nest of all the cables and we'll find the speaker ones. Now that we're at the back of my setup, we can look amongst the rat's nest of cables that I have here and take a look, a closer look at the speaker cable. Now I keep jumping back and forth between the term speaker and monitor. Uh, they are the same thing in terms of audio. However, if you come from a, all of that's on the Instagram page, go follow over there. Typically the speaker cable, the monitor cable is gonna be quarter inch and it'll be stereo. So this is the thicker of the two. Uh, there is also a thinner version of stereo, which is known as mini or 3.5. It's typically what you'd find in your car's auxiliary input. One end of your stereo cable will go right into your monitor and I've already hooked up the other one. So we'll get back to the interface and hook it all up. Okay, and now that we're back around the front, I can loop the stereo cables underneath my desk and plug them into my main monitor. I ran one of them a little too short, so I'm struggling to get it in. There we go. And all that's left to do is power on the interface and we'll see if it all works. Now a note about powering your system on. Typically you wanna do it in an order of interface, computer, and then your stereo monitors. The reason for doing this is if your computer's on first and then you power on your interface, there could be a spike in power frying something within your system, be it a cable, a part inside your computer, or even blowing your monitors if something's turned up too loudly. So just keep that in mind. It's not super common, but I have seen it happen. And by seen it happen, I mean it happened to me. The lights go green, power light on, turn on the computer, 
and let's see what happens. The Windows system just booted up, and as you can see here in my notifications, we do have the Scarlet 18i20. This is the third gen registered with my computer. Now, some of you might be on Windows system and it doesn't show up immediately, and there's a reason why. The main reason that might not have shown up for you is you probably don't have the drivers you need from Focusrite's website. All you need to do is open up your browser, go to your interface's manufacturer website, and download the necessary drivers for your Windows system. If you're on Mac, a lot of interfaces on the market are plug and play, so you don't need to go through that step. As a side note, my girlfriend Amanda's filming today. She's a Mac user while I'm PC. It's been an ongoing battle since I switched platforms. Now, before we get into using it, we want to jump into one last thing to make sure it's working fine, and then we can start going to work. If you're on Windows, head over to your settings and to your system and you're just gonna click on the sound tab. If you're on Mac, you can go to system preferences and click on your sound that way. And all you're gonna do is look at your input and your output. For me here, I have speakers, Focusrite USB audio, and I'm gonna make sure that that is selected. And for input, I'm gonna choose the same thing. And for the final step in setting up your interface, we wanna make sure that A, sound is working, and B, it's wired up properly. So my favorite thing to do is look up the left-right channel test. And it's literally a video where a man is saying left channel, right channel, over and over again, and it's gonna come out of the corresponding speakers. So as you're playing this audio test, you might realize, hey, my system's not wired up properly. To fix that, we just need to reverse the cables. That's it. Channel, right channel, right channel, left channel, left channel, left channel, right channel. So right now, I'm actually coming out of the wrong speakers. I've wired it up wrong. Right now, the right channel is speaking to, through this speaker and the left channel is speaking through this speaker. So we gotta switch those wires around. And to do that, all you need to do is switch the order that your cables are in. So right now, mine, if this is right and this is left, all I need to do is flip them. And with that, we should have the proper audio coming out of the proper sides. Right channel, right channel, right channel, right channel, left, channel, left, channel left channel. Left channel. Coming out of the proper speakers, and we are done. With that, we can go to work and we can start using our interface as expected. So now that we know sound is working and it's wired properly, let's plug in a microphone and see how this works. For the microphone here that I'm going to be using, this is the Rode Pod Mic attached to the PSA1 boom arm, and I've got my XLR cable running around. And we're going to plug it right into my interface. Now you're going to want to look for the knob that corresponds to the input that you've put it in, in which case I've put it in number one, so I'm going to want to turn up the knob for number one. The easiest way to test your microphone without opening up digital audio workstations or any sort of audio system is to simply open up Zoom. Everybody has Zoom now. Don't act like you don't have Zoom. All I'm going to do is start a meeting with myself and I'm going to go into my audio. There's a little arrow audio settings and test my microphone. I've selected my main input as my interface and all I'm gonna do is test if my microphone is working or not. So let's give that a shot. Test, mic test, check, one, two, check. Test, check, one, two, check. And now that everything played back properly, we're all set. We're ready to use our interface and this ends the video. And now that everything's working, we are all set to go to work. We can have our Zoom meetings, we can talk with our friends on Discord, we can record songs, we can write music, all we want because we know our gear is working. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I had a blast setting this up. Of course, I had a few things pre-configured because I've been using it for a little bit. I really thought it would be a great opportunity, however, to show everybody how to set up their new interface. If you wanna see the pod mic in action, you can check out Odds and Ends. We have our first two episodes already up on the channel and we have episode three coming out very soon. And if you wanna see more content on interfaces and rack gear, you can check out our video on the Devil Lock Deluxe Compressor. We'll see you guys next time. Peace.